Let's go, folks. Time for the Gibby Show. How you doing, baseball fans? And welcome to another edition of the Gibby Show presented by Miller Lite, the official beer of Major League Baseball and the Gibby Show. I'm John Arezzi, and joining me, the two-time manager of the Toronto Blue Jays, member of the 1986 world champion New York Mets, the last time they won the World Series. He's a best-selling author. He's the man who always tells it like it is. And he's direct today from his Fortress of Solitude at Yellowstone National Park, the baseball lifer himself, Mr. John Gibbons. Gibby, how you doing? Haven't seen you for a couple of weeks. Hey, Johnny, doing good, man. I'm doing real good. Uh, yeah, I'm out here in Yellowstone. My wife's uh, out here photographing. That's kind of our getaway. Yeah. Uh, we may eventually live out here. You know what? It solves, there's no there's no worldly problems out here. The only problem we get out here is like internet problems. We're trying to film this show. So if it's yeah. a little rusty, it's, uh, it's backwoods internet. Well, it's a small price to pay. I mean, uh, what is the difference there like? in the spring and summer in comparison to when you're there in, to, in the winter. I mean, so give us an idea of what that difference is. It must be beautiful. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, actually, it was kind of warm yesterday. He's got in the 60s and 70s in the park, which that's unseasonably a little bit warm. But the, when we, last time we were here in January, the day we were leaving, it was minus 40. Minus below zero. 40. Ooh. Yeah. So there's your difference for you, big man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I understand you just uh, uh, you're not quite done with Houston yet, are you? I mean, this has been the longest uh, audio book reading, I believe, in in uh, in book history. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm to blame for some of that because I'm not uh, your best reader and I'm not uh, being a little ADHD. You know, my my. My mind's going, I'm trying to read that and, and, and uh, speak it. But, yeah, we thought we were finished. And then, then he called me back the other day, the guy that was doing all that, real pro, real, real. Uh, he said, we've lost like four or five pages. I can't find him anywhere. He's still trying to find him. He said, we got to redo that. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me, man. The guy I feel worse for is him because he's got to sit there and listen to me for all that time. Yeah. But, uh, but we'll get it done. Get it yeah, done. It's still, it's still scheduled to come out around Father's Day, so that'll be something for everybody to look forward to. And and once again, we always talk about it. When you have an audio book, when you have a book out, uh, the people want to hear the person who wrote the book read the book. So I'm sure people are going to love it when it comes out, John. And I'm sure you did a great job. Well, I don't know, but they may not want me to hear me read it, but let's go. Let's talk okay. some baseball. Let's Base. do it. Let's do it. Uh, we do have a great show for everybody today. Uh, we passed the quarter pole mark of the 2023 baseball season, and the Jays are not in a good place. We're going to discuss that with Gibby. And later on, Gabbing with Gibby, brought to you by Tim Hortons, we will be bringing on one of baseball's most respected insiders, the senior baseball writer for The Athletic, and a guy that's covered the game for 35 years, another guy that tells it like it is, Ken Rosenthal will join us. We'll have another Roast and Toast inspired by our friends at Miller Lite. And we will also have some of your questions for Gibby and Ken. But let's get right into the leadoff. Gibby, the Jays finished a homestand where they went four and six. After sweeping the Braves to open it up, they lose three or four to the Yankees in that controversial four four-game series, which lit it up at that rivalry. And then uh, in their own house, they get swept by the Baltimore Orioles. They're now in last place in the AL East. If the season ended today, they wouldn't even qualify for the wild card spot. Uh, talking on behalf of the Blue Jay fans that listen to this podcast in Canada and even around the world where our listeners are from, talk everybody off the edge right now there everyone's on the ledge everyone's freaking out is this the time to be concerned or is is this the time to start panicking well you know what johnny they're not playing very well right now obviously you know it was a crazy week with the yankees and, and uh for things that happened in there that we'll talk about but um i view it from a different perspective you know having been in the dugout uh and gone through the ups and downs and they still got a good team. No, this is not time not time to panic. But but it is time for them to start playing some better ball. But people got to remember it's, it uh, when the reality of it is, you can have all the talent in the world, and they do. They got they got they're as good as any team out there. Those guys go through their ups and downs, and they're human beings. And when the when a team struggles trying to win, every individual on that team is going is trying a little bit harder, trying to be the guy to 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 right the ship, right? 
And baseball is a game, the harder you try, usually backfires on you, right? And it's easy to say, well, you need to back off and all that. But that's that's hard to do as a human. You know, you're out there trying to trying to produce good results, right? In a sport that's very hard to play. Now, in saying that, so what they need to do, they just need to circle the wagons, you know, Schneid, Schneid, Schneid you know, the part of a, a of being a manager, is you you sit, you take the shots for the team, you, you slinging arrows at the, you, you sit there and take it, and the players are going to look at you and see how you're reacting to this whole situation, like it or not. That's just the way it is. In in the, uh, it's funny. Ma- managers, you know, the 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 gospel, I guess you could say, is when with when uh, with, with teams wins, you got great players. When the team loses. You, you know, it's, it's a manager's fault. That's just kind of the way it is. You accept that and you, and you deal with it and move on and, and, uh, and hold them together. And it, he'll, he'll, he'll do that. But it was a rough week for uh, him. A couple yeah. things happened in, uh, in a tough team, a tough week for the team, but you know, that's, that's, that's professional baseball, man. It's tough at that level. It's just that, it's just that division too, John. I mean, when you look at it, even with the Jays uh, in last place right now in the division, they're still over 500. I mean, everyone is is just performing at levels in the American League East that are kind of not seen before. Well, I, don't, I disagree with that because I, I think the division was better back in the in the early 2000s you know, when the Yankees were in their heyday, when the Red Sox, you know, with Ortiz, Manny Ramirez, Mike Glove, Trot Nixon, Verte. I think the, I think they were better. T- and you, you almost, almost flipped that the, the Red Sox and Yankees are down at the bottom now, near the bottom, yeah. the other team's up top. Baltimore was always strong. Tampa even got to the World Series, you know, when Joe Madden was there. So that I thought the division, you know, when they say it's the best now ever, I, I disagree with that. Uh, I almost thought it was better than that because it was the Yankees and Red Sox. Yeah, it's based on the, star, on, the, on the records of the teams at this at this point of the season because so many teams are all over the 500 mark. So that's yeah, but what, they've always been that way. There might have been one team. It's that, always been, that, it's, that, it's been going on. It's always been that way. For decades. And you've, been, you've been part of it, obviously. So, you, you know, you certainly – uh, can plus can, it's the money players, the team with teams with the money are in that division, you know. So they, yeah, uh, so yeah. except for Tampa, and you got to tip your hat to them. So yeah, you got to. I mean, it's uh, it's certainly uh, uh, been a rough one for the for for the Jays, but at the quarter mark of the season, based on uh, the beginning of the season predictions for the Jays to win the AL East, do you still do you still think they will? Yeah, I don't see why they can't, but they need to start playing some better ball now. Like in the, you know, everybody, I, I say that. It's easier said than done. It's never that easy. And it is a good division. I w- I'm not minimizing that. It's a great division. It's best by far, right? It's all, like it yeah. normally always is. But, you know, they can get on a nice little roll. Because think back. They swept the Atlanta Braves, the best team viewed by most in the National League, the National League before, yeah. before this happened. I just think just, you know, they they hit a, uh, you know, with the Yankee series, kind of rattled everything. Uh, it kind of kind of threw them re- down reeling a little bit. But they'll overcome that because, you know what, they – it comes down to talent in the end. They got too much talent. They got as much talent as anybody in baseball. You know, they're, they're really, if, it could, you know, it could get a little bit worse before it gets better. Cause now they're going down to going down to Tampa, the house of horrors, yes. which has always been a tough place to play, but you know what, this is a perfect time for them to regroup, come out of that, play good ball down there. And that might get them rolling. And it's, it's for crying out loud. It's not even June yet. I know. I know. Uh, I, I know uh, people don't want to hear that, but it's not even June yet. No, I mean, when you get into June and then middle of June and July, I mean, a lot can happen from now to then. It's a roller coaster ride. The entire season is always a roller coaster ride. You're going to have your highs. You're going to have your lows. This, unfortunately for the Jays, is a low point for them. But the resilience of the team, like you said, the talent on the team, uh, the chemistry of the guys on the team, uh, I'm sure that uh, Blue Jays fans, you know, don't despair because there's a lot of baseball to go. No, and you know, and you know what? You know, if it was it was back in the old days when they had no wild cards, now you might be getting a little bit worried. But you yeah. know what? All you gotta do is get in, man. Just just win. Just get in. Anything can happen, and, and uh, they'll get in. Anything happens in the postseason for sure. You are listening to the Gibby Show, presented by Miller Lite. And John, I have to uh, say, you're out there at Yellowstone. It was uh, Victoria Day. Uh, you are able to partake in some Miller lights while you're out there at Yellowstone. Everything is, is cool with that. Were you able to celebrate a little bit on Victoria day? And are you enjoying some Miller lights out there at your uh, fortress of solitude? <laughs> yeah. That's usually a good way to top the day off. And you, you know, uh, if you, 
uh, God's wonders out here in the in the wildlife and the the majestic mountains, you know, with the, and sip on a nice Miller Miller Light, man, because it's so, you know it tastes like Miller time. I, I don't care where you're at, out here, out there, up there, down there, it tastes like Miller time. Exactly. Me. You got that sunshine out there and you could actually have one out there in the open, uh, in the yeah. wilderness. Yeah. So that's yeah. Cool. Don't drink and drive, man. It's, it's like, yeah, exactly. Don't drink and drive. Always. That's the first rule. Don't drink and drive. Corner booths, sticky floors, weekdays that feel like weekends. You never forget the way some things taste. Miller Lite. Great taste. 90 calories. Tastes like Miller time. Uh, of course, uh, you know, here talking to John, I, I do want to touch upon one other thing. I mean, obviously, your years in the dugout, 10 years managing, and of course, all the other uh, teams that you've been associated with. At this point where it seems like the sky's falling for the Jays, as a skipper, how do you, how do you keep the guys from not freaking out? Obviously, the media is speculating. But what what do you do as a, as a skipper to say, all right, guys, you know, this is all going to work out fine. Let's just keep working. What do you what do you tell your what do you tell your players? You know, Johnny, that's it's it's hard to say, you know, you, everything's based off of your group of guys, you know, whatever year, whatever, you know, the, the circumstances. There's not really just a blueprint. Right. You know, you got everybody, every team's got different personalities. So you deal with them all differently, you know, than they're different there than when I was there and things like that. But I, all I know is one thing that, that you have to do, the common denominator, and I don't care what year you're at. The manager's a leader of the team. You know, he, he's, he's got, he's got to stay strong. He's, he can't get emotional. He might, you know, he might snap a time or two on the umpires or something. But, you know, the, because the players are looking for him. I don't care how long they've been around. And, um, you know, he's, his job is to hold them together. You take the shots. Stick your chest out and take the shots. And, uh, you know, now if there's some things that are leading to some of these, uh, you know, this tough, tough stretch, you need to address that, no, no doubt about it, you know, behind closed doors or whatever. But, you know, you're the face of the team. It's a tough job. you got to hold 25, 26, however many they got now uh, together. So, so do it, you know, and, uh, you know, take, take the heat for the team because that's uh, deserved or not. That's your job. That is your job. And it's not an easy one for sure. Well, you're listening to, and you're watching the Gibby show. And now it's going to be time for gabbing with Gibby brought to you by Tim Hortons, Tim's new barbecue, crispy chicken loaded Bowls and wraps are now here. It's barbecue on barbecue experience. Delicious ingredients like crispy seasoned chicken tossed in a smoky barbecue glaze and topped with a creamy barbecue sauce. Try them now at Tim's for a limited time. We are so happy to be able to bring on to Gabbing with Gibby, one of the true insiders in Major League Baseball, He's the senior baseball writer for The Athletic. He spent nearly 35 years covering the major leagues, a broadcaster, a regular contributor to Fox Sports MLB telecast, an Emmy award-winning person uh, for TV reporting 2015 and 2016. It's our pleasure to welcome Ken Rosenthal to Gabbing with Gibby. Ken, pleasure to meet you. John, I appreciate all that. I don't think Gibby was aware of any of that, so it's good to know that he now can be sure that I've been working all these years and not just simply hanging around asking him questions. Hey, exactly you, right. you want an Emmy? Two. 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 But you know what, Gibby? Gibby, I've gone totally downhill. I haven't even been nominated the last two years, so I must be – Oh, you must be a truth teller now. They don't like you. <laughs> I don't know. Well, hey, I'm impressed. We usually don't get that caliber of guest on my show, man. So, 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 so. <laughs> well, actually, Gibby, actually, you yeah. know better. No. You know what kind of caliber of guest you're no, right I, That's right, I do, man. And, and there, there's there's not a better professional out there. There's not a, uh, a there's not an individual that cares more about his job, that works harder at it. That's why I was wondering, how do you got time to come on here? You know, usually you're traveling, or do you even sleep at night? You're writing articles. You're you're you got. I'm sure you got to stand by the phone. I mean, how do you do it? Well, I don't sleep all that much at certain times, and 
it could be a problem, but John, I'm used to doing a lot at once. I, I, I don't know. It's just over the years I've been accustomed to it. And actually when I'm not going full bore and things aren't happening, I'm a little uneasy because I'm thinking something must be happening and yeah, I'm not aware of it. Yeah. So I just kind of stay on all the time and it's the nature of the job more than right. anything. And that's kind of where it is, you know? All right, good. Well, let's talk some baseball. Fire away, Johnny. All righty. Uh, I tell you, you know, the Blue the Blue Jays, it's been a horrific uh, several days for them. And when you lose six or seven to your Division East rivals, uh, the biggest question we have, uh, Ken, today is your assessment of the Blue Jays so far this season and manager John Schneider's handling of the club so far. Lots going on, obviously. What's your assessment of the club so far? And, do, and does Schneider survive the season? A lot of people are starting to ask that. I know that. And it's funny. I did a manager's, not on the hot seat column today, but just a status check. I didn't even include him because he just got the job. So why right. would I think he's going to be fired this season? And I don't expect that that's going to happen. I would be surprised. I know fans might have their opinions, but – that's really soon, even in this sport, which has a lack of patience like few others. But there's always speculation love, on social media, right? Well, speculation on social media is not real. It's exactly. speculation on social media. Exactly. So I love the team. And yes, they're underperforming to a degree. Their division is really good. I was stunned by how well the Orioles played this weekend. And actually, I've been stunned how well the Orioles have played in May. They've had a tougher schedule. They went to Atlanta, lost two of three, but played really well. Then they beat Tampa Bay two of three at home. And then this weekend, it was kind of like it all came together. And obviously, Manoa has been an issue to some degree. It was better in that last start. I still expect they're going to be right there. But they've got a powerhouse in the division in Tampa Bay, a team that is on the rise and playing maybe a little bit above itself in Baltimore. The Yankees are really good. They're going to get Rodon back. It's a tough spot for them, and they've got to play at a higher level on certain nights. But I guess it will all come back to the starting pitching when that starting pitching is rolling. And we've seen it a few times this year when they've gone through five good, then they're in a good place. And at times it hasn't been that way. Yeah, I mean, you look at Bassett. I mean, Bassett's come in, uh, you know, I, I watched him with the Mets last year, and he was really very stable for the rotation last year. And it seems like he's done the same thing for the Jays this year. He's his stability and his, uh, his work ethic and everything. He's methodical. And he really has come in the, the last few starts and just been very impressive. No doubt. And he's a great story. Of course, he took the ball off his face and came back and just seems to be a tremendous professional, able to do things during games, make adjustments that not a lot of pitchers can. He's not, the king of velo, but he's got it, and he has been a great stabilizer for them. Kikuchi's still inconsistent. Barrios, I don't know if I fully trust it. Manoa has not been what he was last year. Right. So it kind of all starts there. Their offense is going to be good, and I love the lineup now with the balance that they have with Kiermaier and Varsho coming in. But, yeah, the starting pitching is going to tell it, and – Gibby, what do you think? I mean, are you surprised there's even talk about the manager? I guess after this weekend with the pitching change mess. Hey, you, of course, people are going to be upset. Hey, you mean Gibby do not look too bad now, does he, for crying out loud? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. No, he I ain't the truth. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm a big fan of John Schneider's. You know, I knew John uh, when he was in, in the minor leagues when I was over there managing. And what's happening to him now is typical. I mean, you know, you you watch it every day. When when things go bad, when there's a lot high expectations for your team, and you hit the skids, that's just what happens. It's just I think it's just important for him now. He's got to understand. He's got to take the shots for the team. You know, you can't you can't let anybody start finger pointing or anything. He's he's the main guy. He needs to stick his chest out and take it right. So because because and now is the time the players are going to start watching. Even though they got a, a number of uh, yes, they will. championship veterans on their team. They're going to look and they get, you know what? And that's the worst thing you can do if you can start panicking and put in press or throwing blame around. That's That's what costs you, right? You need, he needs to just hold them together and, and let them play, you know? So. And you know what, John, you know, this too, first time manager, he's well thought of. He did it in the minors. I get it. But when the heat is on in the major leagues, like it's on right now, 
that's a whole different thing. Oh yeah. And nothing prepares a manager for that. You just have to deal with it. And yeah, it's a big test. Well, you know what I noticed when I first got the, the job up there, it's just, it, you know, it's the same game of baseball, Kenny. It just happens a lot faster, man. Things are, things are happening, right? And the, and the number one thing you got to pay attention to is your pitching staff. You know, you got you to have the bullpen ready. You know, nowadays they kind of map things out a little bit more. I think, well, if you get to this point of the game, there's a lot more organization that way instead of the manager using his brains, you know, uh, if they have any, right? <laughs> but uh, so a lot of that's scripted out. At least, you know, you got a, a little more of an idea early on. But it, it is yes. happening fast. But if you get caught off guard, you get caught late, you leave that guy in there one one hit or two long, man, the game swings in the other direction, you know. And even the other day, you know, he got nailed for – uh, going to the mound twice in an inning, right? And they had to take Mano out. That that uh, I was telling these guys earlier. I think a lot of what I think that's that's kind of a result of some, probably some, all the pressure mounting and trying to make the perfect move on a team that the team's struggling, right? You want you want to make sure you get that guy. You, you know, Manoa had been struggling, you know, pretty much this year, right? Uh, do I leave him in longer because the track record this year says you know what? All right. Or mm-hmm. am I trying to build build on something because I need him the rest of the year and the rest of his career? And I want to win this game. We're scuffling our butts off, right? So he's going out there. And that, my thought is the only thing that might have happened was his. he went out there with the intent he was going to take him out. And after talking to Manoa, he changed his mind or they convinced him or whatever. And then he walked off. And as soon as you step off, they got him. That's because the, the right. pitching coach and the manager are always talking. And and I, I find it hard to believe that he he went out there and he and Pete Walker didn't know exactly weren't on the same page or the bench coach or one of them didn't say hey it's the second time you know because there's no way that 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 happens so apparently he changed his right. mind is the only thing I can think of and that, but that you know those things happen I guess you know what it, it happens and Gibby that's not winning or losing a game I'm sorry it's not that big a deal and it probably was the right time to take him out anyway so. I, I don't know. I, I, I am a little surprised by the heat that's on him. I get it. But at the same time, you can't just change managers every six months, folks. <laughs> that's not a good formula either. No. But you know what? The- who were they hire? <laughs> who, social media people suggest that they hire a, a replacement of John. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't. But you know, you know how it is. You know, now they get up over that $200 million range. I think they finally figured out up there. If, and yeah. we got a lot of money here. If we spend some of it, you know, we got a chance to have a little better team. You know, I think that finally – yeah, they finally figured that out. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 that kind of dawned on them because <laughs> they got it, man. That- yeah, guys, I, I I I wouldn't be remiss if I didn't talk about to both of you the Yankees and the Jays series. It started off very contentiously with um, the controversy about Aaron Judge with his shifty eyes, so to speak. That. Uh, that uh, Buck and Dan mentioned on the broadcast, and it opened up a can of worms. Uh, Gibby and I spoke a little bit before the broadcast today about that, and uh, it was a very contentious series. A lot of controversy, a lot of heat between the two teams, a lot of bickering, a lot of vocals in the dugout. I want to get your insider's view, and Gibby, as a manager, this rivalry is heated up to a place I don't think it's ever been before. Talk about this series. What is your assessment on what happened between the dugouts with Aaron Judge, with the tipping of pitches? I want you guys to just kind of have a dialogue on what happened with the Yankees and the Jays. Well, I would say you're right, John, that that was probably the most contentious series I've seen between those teams. Maybe Gibby had one when he was managing, but I can't remember one quite like that. And – What's most interesting about it from a contentiousness point of view is the coaching staff is going at it the way they were. And the judge thing, I don't know if you saw what I wrote. Jay Jackson basically admitted he was tipping. I'm sure the Yankees had it, and that's what that was. Nothing illegal. It's perfectly fine. The Yankees were picking that up with their own eyes. But the coaches, the box, that was something that grew out of that. And then the back and forth, the fat boy stuff and – Aaron Boone calling Pete Walker looking crazy, <laughs> telling him to sit down. I, you don't see that every day. And that spoke to the level of intensity. And to me, I like it. 
there should be more of that. I'll tell you a story, Gibby. You'll like this. A little bit off the topic. But I was speaking with a younger writer last week, and the younger writer pointed out something that Nevin had said, Phil Nevin, about like how this one thing was asinine. Maybe it was a rule. I can't remember exactly which. And the young writer was taken aback that a manager would talk like that. And I said, they used to all talk like that. And they talked even stronger than that. I was remembering guys like oh, you yeah. Yeah, well before you. You know, when you were Oh, up, yeah. Were Back in those days. Now, now everything's so sanitized. When we see Boone and Pete Walker and Schneider go at it like that, that's what used to happen kind of commonly. Now it doesn't happen so much. That's why it was so jarring to people. But I thought it was great. Oh, yeah. You know, you're right. I think that, uh, you know, people forget how important this stuff is, you know. It's, it is the entertainment yes. business. But, you know, you're in it to win. You know, there's a lot of – it's a billion-dollar industry. People – I mean, the teams are spending a lot of money to put, to put a winner on the field. You got you to gotta, you gotta please the rabid fan bases, right? So there's a lot goes into intention, you know, when they start – you know, when things go bad. It, it ratchets it up. It up. And I, but I agree with you. But I, I think that's the game's missing missing some of that. You know, now we're all about celebrating home runs. It's what hat we can put on or what uh, sword or something. That's like the most important things instead of the actual intensity of the, the you know, the, the outcome of the game. But I got a question. You know, you said something about, okay, the, the pitcher said he was tipping the pitch, Jackson, right? Okay, great. I mean, they do all that. That happens all the time. And some guys really pick it up. Okay, okay sure. so, they, so judge at the plate has that. He, he sees him. What you got to look down to the first base coach for that? If he, if if this guy's tipping him, because I think the first base coach is signaling. Okay, 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 and that's not illegal. But now you're kind of stepping over line now. So now you do that at your own well, at your own peril, which is fine. You, you, you're not going to get fined or suspended or anything like that. But and I'm not an advocate of. Drilling. I know exactly where you're going, with drilling this. guys. I know but, exactly where you're going. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the way you solve it, right? Well, like, hey, Gibby, after that happened. A former major league pitcher reached out to me, a pretty prominent name, and said, hey, why are they knocking them down? That's the solution here. Knock them freaking down. A.J. Pruszynski on the show foul territory that he has now said the same thing. Five years ago, well, I don't know about five years ago, 10 years ago, certainly that's what happened. And I know this has been legislated out of the game, and I know none of us can advocate throwing at hitters, but this is how the game policed itself. Right. And you want that crap to end? That's what you do. Now, again, it's not politically correct to advocate for that, and it shouldn't be. You don't want to see anybody getting hurt. But that is the way the right. game was played. And when you take that out of the game, and it's really been kind of gone for a, a little bit now, yeah. you lose some of this. And you lose you some do. of the self-policing, and it's a problem. And, and it's funny because a number of people had that thought. And, my gosh, I, I couldn't write, oh, they should be throwing it at people. I'd be no, crucified. <laughs> Of course, yeah. of course. But that, would, yes. that is the way the game was played. Right. And, you know, and that would stop it. But there's no way. Yes. And I'm a, I'm a huge Judge fan like everybody else. No way he's looking in the dugout. Say, hey, boys, calm down. I'm trying to hit. He's, too, he's, he's, he's got too no, good a conscience. <laughs> but, 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 you know, I guess you wish somebody would come up, would say one time, yeah, I was looking. He's giving me the sign, man. What am I, what am I stupid? I, of course I'm going to take him, you know. But I okay. well, what I love is after that, fans will say, "Hey, Judge said he was looking at the dugout." No, 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 don't believe what he said. Hey, I got a, a nice story. Not even a great try. <laughs> exactly. Man. I got a story for you though. That uh, when we were, do you remember that play? We were, we were playing the Yankees years ago when A Rod was still playing. Uh, oh, Howie how Clark was at third. John McDonald was at short. Our former third baseman Troy Gloss, a big old guy, wasn't playing for some reason. So A Rod's on second. He comes on a pop up, you know, and he says, "I got or mine or whatever." He said, "Right." And the ball drops. You know, there's a big firestorm. Well, is that right? Is that good? Good uh, sportsmanship, whatever it might be, right? But that was like the last inning or very end of the game. Uh, a Rod wasn't coming up again, but at the time he was kind of the uh, poster boy before he sued the league. You know, I think he was a poster boy, wasn't he? Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and that, now he's like on every uh, he's. TV channel, you know, promoting the games like, okay. Anyway, so we, we, okay, so we got no choice. It wasn't like a big orchestrated thing. We face him. He's, he's, somebody's got to drill him. That's just the way the game is, right? So we go to Yankee Stadium the next time we play him. It's probably a month later, I think. Yeah, I bet you never heard of this. Uh, I'm sitting in the manager's office. Tim McClellan comes in, big Tim umpire, the umpire, right? Mm -hmm. He knocks, he says, I got to talk to you. First time, this is before the game, right? 
I said, yeah, what's going on? Go. What's going on, Tim? He goes, he said, listen, the commissioner's office called. They don't want any shenanigans tonight. I said, so what are you talking about? He goes, well, with A-Rod, you know, the poster boy, I guess, or the good guy, the Mr. Mr. Uh, Clean or whatever. Um, and I said, I said, well, I don't know if anything's going to happen. But he says, all I can tell you is they said, if something happens, there's going to be a lot of suspension, some heavy fines thrown around, so whatever. He said, I'm just delivering a message. But okay, all right, fine. So we, so we, 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 we ate it, right? And just, and then they, then they came to Toronto and Josh Towers was pitching to hit him in the leg, something like that. And I'm not, I'm not advocating drilling guys either. I don't like nobody, nobody, I don't think anybody likes that. Maybe some guys, but there's just, okay. See, see, this is what I think happened that series, right? Nothing happens to judge. Although everybody's worried about the coaching boxes. Nothing happens. And he ends up pitting two or three more home runs to beat him. Yes. And now that, yes. that starts him reeling, man. I mean, that starts, you know, where maybe something else happens. You know what? That game, you know, things change a little bit because, you know, but I don't know. Maybe I figured maybe the commissioner must have called somebody and said, hey, listen, you know, this is a. I don't know. I, I don't even think he needs to anymore, John. Yeah. I, I don't believe that's even necessary because the way the game is played, right. it just that stuff doesn't happen. And. Again, it's such a fine line because you don't want to see people hurt. No, exactly. So I'll repeat it again. This is the way players police themselves on the field. If someone was doing something along those lines, whether it's A-Rod yelling stupid stuff at Howie Clark or Judge with his BBIs, it was taken care of. Yeah. And it's difference in the game right now. Hey, you know, you know who's Kenny, you know who suffers the most? J- Jackson, he got sent down. Maybe he has a clean inning or two. He's still pitching in the big leagues, right? But whether whether they got his signs, you know what? He suffered. He may never get back, you know, but you meanwhile, everybody else is thriving. So, you know. Uh, that's a good point. You know, don't and forget. Him. Obviously, listen, he, Gibby, he was very good with me on the phone and explaining. He goes, I did it. I don't like the coach being involved. That's in his mind that crossed the line. That That's a debate for another day, I guess. But. He didn't like that. At the same time, he took responsibility yeah. for what he did. He goes, "Listen, I they had me, man. I I, I got to clean it up," and that's true. Oh yeah, but no you're right. He he was the victim. <laughs> He's a victim. Introducing Tim's Barbecue Crispy Chicken Loaded Bowls and Wraps. Freshly prepared with ingredients like crispy seasoned chicken that's tossed in a smoky barbecue glaze and topped with a creamy barbecue sauce. Can I take another bite? <laughs> Try them for a limited time, only at Tim's. All right, let's go one more in that series. The pine tar, the, the stick em, whatever we got. Do you understand that rule? You, I know you understand everything. I don't quite understand. What, what's going on with all that? There is a line that MLB has. It's not clear exactly what it is, but they don't want pitchers coming out there with their hands full of gook. And this comes back to what was going on two years ago when the sticky stuff thing was – actually, it was last season, I believe. The sticky stuff stuff was out of hand. Spin rates were going through the charts. Pitchers were using it, and it was an unfair advantage. It was wrong. And I understand the pitchers are not happy now because it's seemingly arbitrary how it's enforced – and it's not clear. You're not doing it by any specific measure. It's really the umpire's judgment. At the same time, they brought it on themselves. And I know front offices might have been encouraging and all that. Nah, the pitchers were doing it. Right. And if they weren't doing it, and if they weren't still doing it, this wouldn't be a problem. Now, in Herman's case, I have to laugh about this one. Here's a guy who nearly gets nailed on April 15th for a sticky stuff. They let him go. They said, just wash your hands. We're not going to eject you. It's not that bad. Gibby, same umpiring crew, three of the four same umps, <laughs> including James Hoy. He does it again. <laughs> now they're checking them. They're like, you're out of here, man. And I, that's just not smart. But if hey, you look at it, by and large, by and large, it's not like there have been a slew of ejections for this. There have been a handful here and there. No, but you they sure got ejected for it, ignorance. That's the thing. What's the fix on this, Ken? I mean, what you know? What do they have to do next season? It's obviously too late this season to give some uniformity to what you can use, how much rosin you could use. John, they have to come up with a solution. The solution is to use a ball similar to the one they use in Japan that is naturally tacky, so you don't need all this stuff. For whatever reason, this great sport of ours, which, by the way, I believe owns half of Rawlings now, if not – 
more, maybe all of Rolling. I don't even know how that works, but they're involved with the company. They can't come up with a ball that is a reasonable facsimile of the ball that is used in Japan where it has tackiness and you don't have any of these issues. That's the solution. Every time they try this ball in the minor leagues that they come up with, pitchers seem to hate it for whatever reason. I don't understand that. I understand why the problem cannot be solved, but that's where we are, and that is the solution. Because is this, it part of the CBA this is, this is by arbitrary. any chance? Is it part is it of the what? CBA? Do they have to renegotiate no. in the CBA, or they could just arbitrarily say, we are going to use this baseball that was used in Japan and has sticky stuff on it already. They can, It seems like an easy fix. It is an easy fix, but when they test the balls here, the ones that they're manufacturing, they're not satisfactory for whatever reason. I don't believe that – at all you need to consult the players on this from a CBA standpoint. But at the same time, you do want to test it. You do want to make sure that it's not causing blisters, whatever the case might be. Pitchers hate it for whatever reason. And when they test it, for whatever reason, it is not past muster. And I don't understand what the problem is. I probably should look into this a little bit more honestly because it's ridiculous. Have they tried it in the minor leagues? Hey, you know, okay. yes, yes, they've been trying it in the minors, and that's where the problems are coming in. Okay. Hey, Kenny, here, here's, here's my thing, though. I don't – like we were talking about uh, bean, bean balls, sticky – stick them and stuff. I mean, uh, pine tar has been – pitcher has been using that forever. Nobody yeah. nobody really had a problem. Yeah. Did they come up with something new or something that was really jacking yes. up all that? That's, so that's the yes. problem then. Okay. Yes, that's okay. the problem. It wasn't simply the old school pine tar and all that. This was – some kind of chemical concoction. Spider tech, really I think they out. called it. Spider, spider tech. tech was one yeah. of them. Yeah. Them <laughs> hey, yeah well, it, okay. was, it was a real advantage. All right, here we go again, though. Let me we'll answer this question, right? Okay. If if apparently there's there's a, something in place to stop this from happening, how can you tell a guy if you catch a guy with it? Hey, go wash your hands, man, and come on back out. We'll we'll, we'll forgive you for that one. We really, you wonder why we have so many problems. It, I mean, either you. Uh, if that, that's against the rule or whatever, then you bang them, right? You know, or, or uh, yep. I mean, yep. otherwise. And, and I guess there are degrees. I guess, let's say, Herman, the first time it wasn't that sticky. They said, just wash your hands. This time he comes out, it's like his hands glue. Yeah. And in, in the umpire's judgment, and it is their judgment, it is subjective. Like a lot of calls umpires make, that's the way the game is. Right. Yeah, right. They okay. determine, no, Herman, you, come on, man, you're, you're over the line. With Scherzer, the same thing. He was over the line. In their view, I, and that's why he was ejected. I, hey, well, I got that's yeah. right. I got a, I got another story for you, Kenny. I won't mention names. Yeah. I won't say names. When I came back in 2013, uh, Jimmy Leela took me to the All Star game at City Field, right? The, with the American League, I was there. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you're everywhere, dude. Of course, you were there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he interviewed me though, because I was I was like a, I was just hiding on the bench somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so anyway, so, uh, you know, it's it's full of superstars, right? And the, the pitchers would come in after the inning and everybody would shake their hand if they get everything out right. I'm, uh, this one guy went up to shake his hand, hey, great job, blah, blah, blah. I shook his hand. I couldn't, I couldn't get my hand away from his. It's like I think I still have some of his skin on me, you know, but I'm thinking, no, but you know what? So what? Nobody, nobody say, you know, that was just part of, but I don't, it wasn't jacking up the numbers, the – the, right, all that I guess, but it's like, you know, that's that's where I think the problem is because pitchers pitchers really do need something. Yes, no question. Yeah, and you no you start to play, you, you start taking that away. Now you're now you're you know now you're hurting them a little bit too much. So. But I don't believe they're taking it away. And ninety five ninety seven percent of the pitchers seem to have no problem here. Yeah. Okay. The other three percent have a problem, and Max has been freaking out about this. He is really upset still about what happened, and he claims it's going to get worse and there's going to be issues. Maybe, but to this point, I don't see it as being that big an issue. Yeah, that's why I could call it, it's the entertainment business, brother. Right? Well, let me give you uh, a story about the entertainment business. Now, this is my favorite John Gibbons story. Well, one of them. I, I got many. You do. So, you know what I'm talking about, John. 2015 ALCS, right? That's when you guys were running against the Royals. Yes. Now, managers today normally are quite secretive. And they don't want to reveal their plans ever. They don't want to talk about what's going on. They hate TV interviews, even during rain delays and postseason games. Oh, my gosh, I can't talk now. 
because this is the CIA. Well, we had a rain delay in one of the games. I can't remember which one. I asked Gibby if he can come out for an interview. No problem. Comes out. Elimination <laughs> game. Elimination position, game. It was an elimination. That's right. It was an elimination. And That's the right, way yeah. the interview, the way the camera set up, I'm standing on the dugout and he's standing in the rain. Still does the interview. Doesn't complain. And not only does the interview, explains to me exactly how their pitching is going to set up eighth, ninth, tenth, whatever the case might have been. It was great. And I don't think that's why the Jays were eliminated that year. I think they survived just fine. And it was just one of my favorite things. And afterward, Gibby, a lot of people were like yelling at me on social media, on Twitter. Why are you making him stand in the ring? You're nice and covered. What's up with that? I didn't realize it at the time. Hey, Kenny, so hey, Kenny some of us don't melt, brother. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Hey, look, I do remember that. It is funny. You know, in, in old motor mouth, Josh Donaldson, my boy, you know, he said to me later, he said, because I guess they were watching on TV, he goes, you're giving, all the way, you're giving away all our strategy. But, you know, hey, you know, you know, you know the reality of it. But it's entertainment. Well, yeah. But 99 out of 100 teams that get to that point that are that good, right? They have one lineup. They're not pinch hit for everybody. So you could tell right. you, it's at the end of the game how many pitchers you got left. So if I, I could say something, well, I'm going to bring in so and so. Ned Jost ain't going to pitch hit for Billy Butler or somebody over there. No. Right. So it's not like it's, oh, gosh, you gave away something. But the old Josh, man, Josh, go, what are you doing? You got that, especially to Kenny. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. It was it was very memorable. That, that was a fun was, series. That too, was beautiful. Actually. Hey, Johnny, you got a couple yeah. questions for Ken from the fans, and then uh, so we can let him run. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure he's traveling we somewhere. Absolutely, we do. Yeah, uh, let's get to those right now. Um, uh, question: uh, This one came off of Instagram from MW Bauer Seven. How often did Gibby and Ken interact during the course of a baseball season when Gibby was managing the Jays? Of course, you just mentioned that playoff situation. But how often during the season do you guys communicate with each other? Not that often. We text once in a while, right, Gibby? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was so buttoned up. I would. Season. <laughs> yeah. That's right. The Jays are – here's yeah. the thing. I mean, because there's no ratings in the U.S. for the Jays when they're on Fox, we don't put them on during the regular season. So it's not like I'd run into them a whole lot. Maybe once when I go out to Yankee Stadium to see the Jays just when they're in New York. But it wasn't like I'd see the Jays all that often. Hey, you know, I will text yeah. him every now and then when he's doing a date game on TV and I'm sitting on my couch <laughs> drinking a Miller Lite or something. I'll fire him up a text like, you know, make sure he's, hey, let's go, man. Let's do this right. <laughs> hey, don't, don't. <laughs> Get it right. Well, give me pretty much a – Gibby's pretty much a straight shooter all the time. Yes. You know? No doubt. <laughs> no doubt about that. As is Ken. As is Ken. That's why we yeah. get along so yeah. well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I had another one here, and this one really uh, goes right to what's going on with the Jays, and it seems to be somebody that a lot of people are kind of pointing fingers to. But this one is for Ken. Uh, this comes from uh, Gregory1960 on Twitter. At what point did the Jays make some hard decisions on Kevin Biggio? Has he played himself off the roster? Ooh, tough one. I will start off by saying I don't believe Kevin Biggio is the problem here. And <laughs> if, you're on, if you're focusing on him, it's probably a good thing, if anything. Yeah. But <laughs> obviously, I, I mean, Gibby can speak to this. It's a performance industry. And if you're not performing, that your job is always on the line. And it's funny. Some of the great players in the game, Goldschmidt's one of them, they act like their job is always on the line. They work yeah. like that as if they're afraid and it drives them. But in Kevin's case, and he's not a regular with them really. So I, I don't see that it's that important one way or the other, uh, if he's on the roster or not. It's not on the top of the priority yeah. list for sure. Right. For right. sure. Fixing uh, Manoa yeah. is the top of the priority list. Yeah, absolutely. I also have a couple of uh, uh, true or false questions for you, Ken. And, uh -oh. uh, Ooh. Here's Tell the, first the truth. One. I got, I got I got two for you. Uh, the first one is: Will all the AL wide will all the AL wild card teams come from the AL East this year? I would say true as of right now. I don't see any. Certainly, no team in the Central is going to get a wild card. The West is interesting because Texas and Houston and Seattle are all strong. So, yeah, it's possible that a wild card could come from there. But I would go with true. I. I do expect the East is going to produce 
every wild card. Okay, next one, uh, true or false? The Toronto Blue Jays will be one of those wild card teams or AL East division winner. Well, I just said basically that four of the five teams in the division are going to make the playoffs, and I expect the Jays would be one of them. Jays would be right there. The Red Sox would be out. Yeah, Very cool. I got one uh, question for you. Uh, As someone who's covered the game for 35 years, what is your most memorable moment in your storied career? It's really easy. And I get this question from time to time, and it's the night Cal broke the consecutive games record at Camden Yards. And is it the greatest thing I've ever seen? I don't know if I put it up there because I've seen some amazing World Series games, amazing performances. But at that point in my career, I was a columnist in Baltimore. And back then, pre-internet, people had a different view of each other in our business. Nobody in L.A. ever read me. None of the writers. Nobody in Texas ever read me. But all of the writers came to Baltimore because this was a national event. And it was a time when newspapers traveled more than they do today. Press box was packed. There were hundreds of reporters there. This was a big thing. So I knew that everybody would be reading me. And I wanted to make a good impression. And, of course, the event itself was one of the most memorable things you'll ever see. It was just beautiful. And we all knew it was coming because the countdown had been on. But even then, it exceeded our expectations. The president and vice president were in the ballpark that night, as was Joe DiMaggio, as was Rip's father. And it was just a really special night. Now, I don't know that I wrote great, but I wrote good enough. And next day, it's still the best-selling newspaper in Baltimore Sun history. I was on the front page. Other writers were on the front page. It was all baseball. And that was just the night. And I remember that night, I always tell this story too. I went home and my wife said, you know, she had been watching. She's not really a baseball fan, but she had been watching this. This was a big deal. She said, you'll cover a lot of crap, man. you got to cover negative stuff from time to time. And it can wear on you. I know that from living with you. But I was really happy to see that you got to cover something so positive. And it was so positive. So I didn't always get along with Ripken, mm-hmm. but that night was the most special night of my career, and, and it will not ever be topped. It was way up there. That's a great story. Hey, Kenny, I got sorry, I got to tell you, man. That's that is a wonderful story. We still don't read you down in Texas, pal. Sorry, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> You can get on the computer and read me if you want to. Back then you couldn't. Well, let me tell you this. There's nobody better in the sport than you at doing this stuff. And and uh you're just a, you're just a you're just a good dude, all around guy. We appreciate you coming on here and spending some time with us. And uh we wish you the we wish you the you best, man, and uh keep up the great work, man. The game needs you. Okay. All right, thanks guys. All right, pal. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Kenny. As we say each and every week, another great gabbing with Gibby. John, that was pretty incredible to, to get a guy like Ken on and his insights and his uh, direct to the point assessments. Well, you know, Kenny's one of the best out there. That's what he does for a living. You know, it's, it's, yeah. uh, nobody does it better, but it's amazing how the, the info these guys can come up with, you know, and they, but you know what? They, they're, Students of the game also because they got to write articles on it and then they got to cover games. And, you know, I mean, he's different than a lot of guys. He's doing a little bit of everything, you know. And they got to have connections in there where they can find out really what's going on. So, so don't, they don't just have to throw out, you know, BS, you know. And, and uh, we don't want them to th- throw out fake news, man. We want some, we no. want some accuracy. In All the stuff, real ones. Know, and so. he is uh, – well, he's, he's good. One, he's one of the best uh, in the history of uh, baseball reporting and – He's a straight shooter and was really great. The Gabbing with Gibby, of course, as always, brought to you by our friends over at Tim Hortons and uh, now inspired by our friends over at Miller Lite. It's time for another Roast and Toast for the week. And, John, let's get right into it with you. Uh, who are you roasting this week? You know, Johnny, it's, it's it actually it's kind of pr- pretty obvious. You know, we were just talking to Kenny, you know, about the uh... – uh, pitchers getting ejected for substance on their hands and things like that. And I think the, you know what, forever in baseball, pitchers have always used some kind of pine, pine tar or something to help with their grip, right? And nobody had a problem with that. And I don't either. And you'd be amazed that just about everybody on the team uses it, right? I guess we're, we're like what Ken was talking about, that 
they came up with a new su- substance that really jacked up the numbers on spin rates and all that. You know, the old, the uh, the biggest terms in game now. Now that's okay. Now that now now we're getting now we're that's almost getting as bad as the, the technology is into the bang and the drum stuff. You know, we're going a little bit overboard maybe. But uh, the fact that there's like there doesn't seem to be any clear uh, guidelines onto what's allowed and what's not, and you know if, what some of this guy gets caught out, coming off the field, they let him go wash his hands, and then this and that. It's like you know when he flipping coins, or right? That, that you know it really in, in a lot of these things that comes down on the the umpires makes it tougher for those guys because they don't have anything to really follow. They just using their judgment. It's kind of like the slide rules. Sometimes it's a judgment call in, in the, so you're never going to please anybody. And, and they're definitely not pleasing the pitchers now. That's for sure. No, until, until you have uniformity, until you have a special baseball that uh, may have some substance on it, that's approved. Uh, it's going to be this, uh, this really this chaos and confusion when it comes to the sticky stuff, because umpires part and as you were saying and when you have to you know you tell a guy to go wash your hands off and then come back i mean it's just it's unheard of in 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 the history of baseball what's going on right now with this stuff yeah it, yeah it is in the it's almost like we, we continue to kind of complicate things don't we you know it's like yeah. i guess it's it's roll the, kiss, with the changes it, it's the kiss principle keep it simple stupid right right exactly keep that's it simple perfect. yeah it's perfect and john we uh have something that uh, we're toasting this week. And it was really a great gesture by Vladdy uh, over at uh, the game. Uh, there was a fan that uh, was a cancer survivor. He held up a sign and Vladdy did something amazing and, and gave the kid his bat. Yeah. You know, in the, yeah, a y- young boy in the, uh, you know, the young sign kid. there in, in the, you know, th- you know, we sit here and talk about all the, the, the good things and the bad things about baseball and, and the, you know, bottom line is the entertainment business and it's a feel good business. People, people go to the ballpark, you know, to enjoy it, to get, spend time with their families, to vent. There's no doubt there's some venting going on up there now, but the bottom line is in the grand scheme of things, it's nothing compared to like what this young man was going through, you know, yeah. Uh, fighting cancer and then then for vladdy to, to do do what he did and to even notice that and, and, and boba shed i think was involved too yeah. you know that's what makes you feel good that's that's what life's all about it uh and in the end and and you know what they made that kid's day and you know what who knows what that'll do for him so i'm i'm, I'm proud of those guys and uh shows the compassion inside and the human side of uh this great sport yeah the the gesture as you said not not only made the courageous boys day, but it also gave us another example on how baseball can really impact lives uh, far beyond the diamond, you know, it is. And that's in that, you know what, that's the important thing in life. Absolutely. Corner booths, sticky floors, weekdays that feel like weekends. You never forget the way some things taste. Miller light, great taste, 90 calories, tastes like Miller time. Well, John, that's going to wrap up uh, another edition of the Gibby Show. And I do want to remind everybody to don't forget to pick up a copy of this bad boy. It's out there right now and uh, it's doing really well. It's called Gibby Tales of a Baseball Lifer by John Gibbons and Greg Oliver. Audio book coming soon. Uh, so that is uh, it's still just every time I take a look at it and and read some of it, John, I mean, it really, really great story, and uh, just a just a very honest uh, analysis of your life as a baseball lifer. So everyone will enjoy <laughs> that. No, I know. Too bad I didn't have any chapters in there on uh, wildlife. So, so let's go. I got to get out that's, to the park. That's book man. number and, uh, two. All right, for check John out Gibbons, some Grizzlies. <laughs> <laughs> for John Gibbons, this is John Arezzi. We're going to talk more baseball with you next week right here on the Gibby Show. Have a great week, everyone. John, enjoy your time out there. Go Blue Jays.